Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to my channel, Runaway Slave. I would like to give a big up to all my subs and supporters who like, comment, and share the videos. In addition, a special big up to all those who purchased my masterpiece, my book, The N Word Is No Secret in the Service. Big up to you all. Let's cook. Okay, people, here is some American history, and this is a never forget story. It takes place in Coatesville, Pennsylvania. Yes, the state of Pennsylvania in a place called Coatesville. Coatesville, people who are from the Philadelphia area, they are familiar with this. It's a little less than an hour from Philadelphia if you're driving. Now, this happened on August 13th of the year of 1911. 1911, not that long ago. And it's about the lynching of a black man by the name of Zachariah Walker. Now, at this time, in Coatesville, Pennsylvania, and a little before this, Coatesville, Pennsylvania is just a white town. You know, it was a white place to live for white folks, white pilgrims uh, in Pennsylvania. And at this time, by this time, Pennsylvania had been known, had become known as the Steel State. That's why you have the teams like the Pittsburgh Steelers. It's because Pennsylvania has become known as the Steel State or the Steel Capital of the world at this time. Now, one of the towns in the state of Pennsylvania that had steel plants was Coatesville, Pennsylvania. Coatesville had two major steel companies. And again, at this time, Pennsylvania is like the steel capital of the world. Now, this whole steel thing in, in America and in the state of Pennsylvania, it was started by a Scottish man by the name of Andrew Carnegie. He built the steel empire in the state of Pennsylvania. Now, what happened was Andrew Carnegie, he eventually sold uh, Carnegie Steel to the U.S. Steel Corporation, which was owned by J.P. Morgan. After this deal, Andrew Carnegie walked away with about $350 million. That was in the year of 1901, people, so go figure. Year of 1901, $350 million. I must add that none of these people, whether it be Andrew Carnegie or J.P. Morgan, U.S. Steel Corporation, wouldn't have anything if it were not for them oppressing my people through chattel slavery and genocide. And also many of you people who are listening to this video. They wouldn't have anything, so whatever to them, I don't give them much of credit for anything, okay? Because at the root of every white corporation's wealth are black American slaves, oppression, chattel slavery, and genocide, so let's go. Now, in Coatesville, Pennsylvania, there were two major steel companies. One was called Worth Brothers, and the other one was called Lukens. Now, at this time, before these steel companies ended up there, in Coatesville, Pennsylvania, it was just a place to live for white pilgrims, descendants of pilgrims, you know. And because they had all this work now, these big time steel companies that are there, they needed people to do the labor and stuff like that. So what they did is they would recruit unskilled labor workers from rural Virginia and also overseas. They did this to keep the wages low and also to meet their ever growing demand for labor on the floor. They had a lot of work. They don't want to pay that much. Who can we get to do this work? We can get you know, some African-American former slaves from Virginia and also a lot of ethnic Italians, Polish people, Russians and Hungarians. They would bring them to America to do this work as well. OK, so these people that they brought in being black American people and also these ethnic uh, Europeans, they were in competition with the local white American pilgrims for the work. So you can already see the temperature in that town. Who's already mad? OK, you have people here that are coming who they can pay less money. And it's actually in return for them. It's a better lifestyle. They could pay them less money. So these pilgrims in this town, these white American pilgrims, they're already mad. They're already upset. So, you know, the energy of the town. Now, they feel as though these people are coming to take their jobs. And by this time, the year 1911, Coatesville had about one thousand black laborers from the South living there. OK, now they also had a lot of these European pilgrims. These people, again, there they are there because they are cheaper labor than these white pilgrims who reside in Coatesville. Now, they uh, there was a lot of hateful energy in this town called Coatesville due to that. And because of this, Coatesville was a segregated town. The uh, European immigrants they had to live close to the black people because the American pilgrims, they did not want these people living near them. 
They definitely didn't want black people living there then. They were upset because they knew these people were coming to take what they thought were their jobs. So there you go. That was the energy of the town. The town was segregated due to that reason. And that's where Zachariah Walker came from. Zachariah Walker, he arrived in Coatesville in the summer of 1911 from Virginia. Now, he was one of those black laborers who came there to take advantage of this, work, this money-making opportunity at the steel plant. Now, they say that Zachariah Walker, he was still an outsider when he got there. Now, whatever that means, I don't know. They said he lived on the edge of the town in an area called the Spruces. He didn't have any ties to the African-American community, they said. Maybe it was because he hadn't been there that long. I don't know what that means when they say that he doesn't have, he didn't have any ties to the African-American community yet. It could be some mixed up stuff in history. Maybe he did. Maybe he was getting to know his people and things like that. But he was just getting to the town. OK, now the history says that on August 12th of the year of 1911, Zachariah Walker, he was tra he was walking home after a day he spent at a local tavern. They say that Zachariah Walker was at a local tavern drinking. OK, they say that he was drinking at this local tavern and he was walking home and he came upon some European immigrants who were also working at this steel plant, who worked at this steel plant. They were on their way home as well, okay? Now, Zachariah Walker and these European immigrant workers, they had some kind of beef, some words, some back and forth. They got into an altercation. When they're, into the, when they're in this altercation, a white pilgrim security guard who worked at the steel mill, his name is Edgar Rice, he's seen what was going on, okay? This guy, Edgar Rice, he used to be on the Coatesville police force. He is no longer. He is now a security officer at the steel mill. He sees what's going on. He goes over to break it up. Now, again, Edgar Rice is an American pilgrim, and he's from this town of Coatesville. People know him. He's a native, okay? He's not one of these European immigrants who came. Now, when Edgar Rice gets to this altercation, he tries to apprehend Zachariah Walker first. Now, Zachariah Walker is fighting the security guard, Edgar Rice. He ended up eventually shooting Edgar Rice, okay? Edgar Rice has his gun. Zachariah Walker has his gun. Boom, they draw. Zachariah Walker beat him to it, lit him up, okay? After Zachariah Walker did that, he ran into the woods. Edgar Rice dies from being shot by Zachariah Walker. Zachariah Rock Walker runs into the woods. So now the town, you know how they feeling. This is one of their local pilgrims, okay? They're searching the area for Zachariah Walker. Zachariah Walker is somewhere out on a farm hiding, and a young farm boy discovered Zachariah Walker hiding in a barn. And when he did, he notified these search parties who were looking for Zachariah Walker. When these search parties came to Zachariah Walker, he was able to scare them away with his gun. OK, so then they retreated. Zachariah Walker, they say, went up in a tree to hide. He went and hide, hit up in a tree. So the next day, a group of firefighters came. They spotted Zachariah Walker in the tree. They tried to apprehend Zachariah Walker again, and they said that Zachariah Walker had attempted suicide by shooting himself in the head, but they were eventually able to get him. They took Zachariah Walker to Coatesville Hospital, and at this Coatesville Hospital, he had a self-inflicted gunshot wound to the head. Okay, now that's questionable as well. Again, this is coming from their story. Um, who knows if this gunshot wound was even self-inflicted? Because, you know, these people had guns. Edgar Rice had a, guns. Who know, uh, had a gun. Who knows? Maybe Zachariah Walker did decide to try to take his life. So he's in the hospital with this gunshot wound to the head on August 13th, okay? He's in the hospital. The word got out to the Pilgrim community that the guy who shot their brother, Edgar Rice, is in the hospital and killed him. So what happened was these knuckle-dragging beast pilgrims, they formed Pell Voltron as usual, and they decided we're going down to that hospital. Now, again, Zachariah Walker is in this hospital. He's, a, he's going to jail probably, so he's handcuffed to the bed. So these pilgrims, they all got together, knuckles dragging on the ground, hobbled down there. And the history says that these people came between 2,000 and 5,000 deep. Now, all the stories that I get are 2,000 to 5,000. OK, they, no story says 1000. I wouldn't care if it was 500. If they came down there 100 deep. That's deep. But they're saying two to five thousand deep. A lot of men, a lot of teenage boys. OK, and people in this time in history 
white teenage boys, white teenage pilgrims. They were very active in promoting racial violence. And although they were coached by the men, they learned this from the men who told them what to do. They were more active because they were younger. They were faster. They could move a little bit uh, more. But they always wanted in on the racial violence. So they all go down to this hospital, two to 5,000 deep. They grab Zachariah Walker from the hospital while he's still handcuffed to a bed, okay? Shot in the head. They grab him. They drag him from the hospital. They say, Zachariah Walker is saying, for God's sake, give me a chance. It was self-defense. It was self-defense. He tried to kill me first. Don't give me a crooked death because I'm not white. They say he's pleading with these people. It didn't work. They already had a funeral pyre waiting for him outside of Coatesville. Basically, they had something they already had heating up that they make and use for cremations. Okay, they had this already smoking like a grill. They dragged Zachariah Walker there. They threw him in a fire. They said that when they threw Zachariah Walker in his fire, he tried to climb out one time. So the people were beating him with metal pipes, metal objects and railings beating him in the head with it, beating him in the body with it as his skin is burning for him to get back in there. He tried to get out again. They continued to beat him and beat him. He tried three times, okay? They said that they can hear Zechariah scream over a half of a mile away. Now, this crowd of two to 5,000 men, women, and children are cheering. They're yelling. They're happy as these people are kicking him back. After the third time that they kicked Zechariah Walker back into the fire, he didn't move anymore. So these white pilgrims, these white American pilgrims are out here having a great event. They're cheering. They're happy. The police are there. They do absolutely nothing. Nobody in this town does anything to stop it. They were all part of it. After this was all over, most of the crowd left, but there were still many people there who stuck around. And they stuck around to collect body parts as souvenirs, bones, fingers, and things like that that they were going to take back to the town and sell and parade around and put in different places one boy said that he kept a finger in his pocket for five to six weeks. He was so happy. OK, nothing happened behind this. The lynching of Zachariah Walker. That's uh, some American history. Never forget. And people, you notice how when Zachariah Walker was fighting these immigrants for whatever reason, which might have been about some racist stuff, because, of course, these immigrants were chosen over the black American people as they are today. Remember, uh, America made race. America created race. These people are European immigrants, but they took the status eventually of becoming white. OK, so then they started to feel like, you know, they were superior. You know uh, where these people come from. You got to remember uh, these European immigrants. They already were oppressing darker skinned people or indigenous people in the lands of where they come from. So a lot of this racism was already in them. They come to America. America eventually makes these people white and they just go all out. And that's why we have a lot of European immigrants now to this day who are very hardcore white supremacists. In addition to these pilgrims, these pilgrim Americans. OK, so you notice how the security guard. Who is not a cop at this time, he's a former cop. He came to apprehend Zachariah Walker and not the people he was fighting first. You notice that? You notice that? And that's to this day, that's very normal for white people to respond like this, especially the police. They show up and they immediately jump on the black person. No question. Even if the black person is losing, you know what I'm saying? Even if they get and jump, they jump on the black person. No question. A good example of one is we recently seen this. It was circulating kind of viral. I don't know if you all seen it. Maybe you did. There was a viral very video of the rapper Jim Jones at the airport. Uh, Jim Jones was fighting two white Americans or three of them or something like that. He's fighting them off. He's fighting. And then when the police come or security, whoever they are, look to be the police, they came. Jim Jones has his hands in the air and he's sitting down and he's like, why are you coming to get me? He's yelling. He's got his hands up. He's like, it's two of them. It's them against me. Why are you coming to get me? That was just a white response. That's a that's an autonomic white American response. It is built in them just like blinking your eyes, your heart beating or a gag reflex. White Americans are always going to respond in favor of their people. When they see a black person, they don't even they, they can't explain it. This is what's in their 
DNA. It's an autonomic response. It's like you putting your finger down your throat and automatically your gag reflex kicks in. That's why when they responded to that situation with the rapper Jim Jones and he's saying, why are you coming to get me? He's sitting down with his hands in the air. He said it was two of them against me. The same reason why this security guard, when he came back here in the year in the 1900s, he apprehended Zachariah Walker as opposed to the European immigrants. Same exact thing, people. So um, condolences to Zachariah Walker, condolences to his family. I don't know much about Zachariah Walker. There's not a whole lot of information out there or pictures of Zachariah Walker or anything, but he came from Virginia. Maybe you who, who's listening to this video, you may be a relative of Zachariah Walker. Walker. I mean, maybe his brother, sister. Uh, I'm sorry, Zachariah Walker may have been your, you know, your grandfather, your uncle. I, I mean, I mean, not your aunt, your uncle, whatever. But I'm sure that Zachariah Walker has people with the last name Walker who are on YouTube and other places. Get in the comments. People, what do you think about this situation? Do you even believe the story that they said where Zachariah Walker shot himself in the head? And in addition, I noticed in the story they often say that Zachariah Walker had been drinking all day um, before this altercation. That could also be something that's thrown in there to make it look like he was aggressive and a troublemaker. I don't even know if that's true. I don't even know how true it is that Zachariah Walker was at a pub all day drinking. Remember, white supremacists often make the history, and we don't have many people, you know, speaking, many other black people saying what happened and who were there at the time and passing it down. Maybe there is, and I just don't have a whole, uh, uh, this information, but that's questionable as well. But the response was typical white American response. You see this even now in the year of 2024. White people will form Pell Voltron and get together. This dude out here, the security guard approached him. Uh, who knows what he did? But uh, I forgot to tell you, he also threatened Zachariah Walker with some things. First, he said that he was going to beat Zachariah Walker with a club and things like that. I'm talking about the white security guard. Boom, they draw guns. Zachariah Walker defends himself. He shoots the security guard first. But people, get in the comments. Let me know what you think about this Zachariah Walker lynching. American history, never forget, easy.